So let's get onto this subject then of uh, how to get the most of our internet connection. And today we'll be kind of tying in some of our quick tips segment that we normally have into this section as well. It kind of ties in quite nicely with this discussion as well. So good to have you back on the show, Daniel. Hi Jude, happy new year to you and happy Jeez. new year to all our regular listeners. Uh, great to be oh, back, thank you. Um, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first of all, can you tell us about the different types of in internet connection available in Ireland? And Jude, there's quite a basket of them out there. And I suppose before getting into list, listing them off one by one, um, because as I call these out, uh, there's one major factor that's going to come in to influence in your type of internet connection. And there's three words to it, it's location, location, location. Certain <laughs> services are available in certain locations and others mm. are better in other locations. But I suppose the most popular one in Ireland at the moment uh, will be, you know, your standard telephone uh, line that delivers broadband. Uh, that's mm. probably by and far the most popular. Uh, it's quite mm. widespread across the country, but again, it doesn't perform fantastically in the rural areas, the places outside your villages. Um, I suppose mm. getting into your Dublin, Cork and areas like that, you have your TV cable companies who also provide it. So that's, um, that's a totally different system. Um, major towns, you know, major county towns would probably have those, not all of them, but a lot of them would. Um, so that's a, an yeah. option there. So you kind of a bit of competition going on there with the telephone lines in the towns and the TV companies delivering it through the, through the you know, like say your Virgin Media and that. Uh, so that they're the two, I suppose, two most popular, you know, that have the biggest penetration through the population. Uh, we're all yeah. familiar with mobile data on our mobile phones if we have a smartphone. And that's a, obviously that's a type of broadband service in itself. Um, 4G is, is the next, well, a recent generation of a 5G is on the way. With 4G, I suppose, yeah. is great penetration around the country. And that has the bonus of, you know, working well in urban and rural areas and outside your villages as well. Um, mm. When you start getting out into the countryside, you know, when you go maybe more than two miles, three miles maybe outside your, you know, your local, your local village or small town or whatever, you're starting to get onto the back burner of what's available um you know in some really hard yeah. to reach areas you're going for satellite broadband you could be looking at fixed wireless and um or, or the mobile data in its own you know away from your smartphone to, to put it in a small little box that um that, that you plug in your house so it it really does come down to location 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 yeah. there the, they're the different types of what's out there and i yeah. suppose i give a little overview of where they tend to be found. Yeah, so with with those different types then, let's say that you've got a few different ones of these that are available to you in the location you're in. What are some of the strengths and weaknesses of each of them? Like you could talk about like cost and expense. Surely there must be quite a difference in cost and expense, maybe ease of setup, things like that. Yeah, there definitely is. Um, like the cost, unfortunately, Ireland is an expensive enough country for broadband um so no, like you can you can be going anything from you know maybe 30 euros a month roughly up to even 70 euro a month in some cases and beyond if you if you're um you know maybe if you're if you're requiring extremely heavy usage um but that that, that would be yeah. you know a rare situation but like it, it is expensive so it does it does come into fact then that you know how much do you want to be paying a month um then then you have to start asking yourself the question you know how much how much am i going to be using it or do i you know am i a member of a family that um you know where's maybe going to be four five or six different devices going in the house and um you know where you're going to need a much stronger service and sometimes that might command a more you know a, a more higher monthly fee so there's all these little factors that come into consideration in you know choosing choosing what you know if you are lucky enough i suppose to have a choice of a few providers um you know factoring in what's mm. what's going to work for you and your family you know, if you're kind of on your own or there's just one or two in the house it leaves it a bit more open to you but if you're going where there's you know maybe kids now at home school 
um, you know, college students are home or people working from home, um, you know, the desire for faster speeds, uh, uh, greater capability yeah. is definitely into focus now with COVID-19 um, back, you know, back in full tilt again. Yeah, so just as a broad kind of thing here, let's let's take one example um, and we won't get into specific providers here because it's not so no. much um, that side of it that we're interested in. But let's just say, for example, satellite, um, a satellite connection. Yeah. Uh, what would be the strengths or weaknesses of that? Um, would that be like the cheap end or the expensive end? Would it be the fast end, slow end? Or is can you even answer a question like that? Yeah, um, you can sort of come around it. Um, satellite is generally the last option available to you. Um, right. the, the, the reason being is it's 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 very expensive to get to get installed. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes it can be an upfront fee from 150 euros upwards because they've got to send somebody around, put up a dish in your house, uh, run a cable back in, put a a router box somewhere in, in your house that's you know that's going to give you a wi-fi or a cable connection to your computer so that actually yeah. you know kind of involves nearly you know you take an engineer you might have to leave you know somewhere that's 50 miles away from you drive out so his 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 or her time uh, getting to you then physically getting out and putting that material in you know the, the dish the cable the router setting it all up mm. and then driving back to their base you know that's that could be a half day's work yes. or even more for some people. So that that has to be factored in and that usually comes as an upfront install fee. Um, yeah. Then because it's satellite, um, it is the more expensive delivery method. So yeah. you're going to be limited on, you know, you're going to be limited on data download, probably put a 30 gig download allowance there, maybe less in some yeah. cases, maybe more in others. Um, so again, that would, you know, limit it to maybe somebody that's, you know, maybe just in a household that's going to be the sole user of the internet, because if you burst that 20 gig allowance or 30 gig allowance, the, the data usage uh, charges kick in. And, you know, it could, it could mean that you're gone beyond your monthly rental uh, at that point. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it probably would be one of the last choices. Um, if you have no other option, it's probably the one, you, you know, the last on, on the list that you would pick. Yeah. Yeah, OK, so that gives a bit of an idea as well of mm. of what the capabilities are. And it's good to just hear everything, all of the different options that are out there as well. I think that yeah. that's just useful sometimes when people are choosing mm. things. So just if somebody was actually in that position now um, where they're thinking, OK, I'm not committed to anybody yet. I'm not in a contract. I can choose mm. a, a broadband provider, an Internet provider for myself. What sort of guidance would you generally give? What advice would you give to somebody if if they're not able to get the more mainstream options? Um, satellite might be the last thing, but what would you suggest before that? Um, right, if if the phone if the phone line option is not available to you. Now, I'll, actually, I'll say it's two things about the phone line option. Um, yeah. The government have done the rural fibre broadband rollout and it's I've seen in a few places I can't get it here I live in in a small little town uh the yeah. pole with the fiber goes about 300 meters from my house on out into the countryside I can't get it but um I have a yeah. good mile and a half in the town here and the speeds are absolutely fantastic and their friend further down the road just can't get it because they only brought the cable so far up the road so it's really mm -hmm. if you're if you're beside one of these um, fibre lines that have rolled out in the countryside, uh, the fibre to the home, it's absolutely fantastic if you can get it. Yes. If you can't, you're relying, then you have, you have to go back to the old telephone wire. And if you're too far outside of town, the speeds are very, very slow. So you're either extremely lucky or extremely unlucky. And if you fall into that kind of category, um, you're probably going to have to look at mobile broadband or a fixed wireless uh, provider. Um, yeah. Uh, the mobile broadband, um, you know, works works just like your smartphone picks up mobile data. Uh, I will say a big thing about mobile broadband data, if you're on one of those, try and place the little router box in a window. If you know where the local mast is, try and fit, put it in a window that's facing that mast. So if yes. you know the mast is north of you by two miles, and try and put it into a an north-facing window 
and plug it in there. Uh, leaving it in, in the hall that's in the middle of the house, that kind of thing. It's like mobiles. Remember when they came out first, Jude? Um, you know, yeah. when we all got our mobile phone first back in the 90s and you were going to make a phone call. Oh, I have to, I have to go to the front door or I have to nearly <laughs> step out in the backyard uh, just, just to get the signal to, to phone your friend. Uh, mobile mobile broadband is principally like that still. Uh, so you've got to get you got to get the router, the little router box into a good position, and that can be yeah. that can be a huge difference between an absolutely brutal service and a really satisfactory service. Um, yeah, you know, so even even on even on the minute scale inside your house, location, location, location again. Yeah, so yeah, it is interesting that it comes down to that so much. And is it worth then in that case, um, is it worth actually doing a little bit of checking before you say you have to go with a mobile broadband provider? Is it worth checking where the masks are? Who's got a service in that area? Yes, um, most of your mobile phone providers, or mobile broadband providers uh, on their websites will actually uh, display a kind of a coverage map and uh, they kind of overlay it onto Google Maps. I've seen it done in quite a few instances and you can really zoom down into your, you know, yeah. on, onto really where your house is and it'll give you a kind of a colour code. Now it's representative, it's not, it's not absolutely guaranteed, but yeah. if you got a good strong colour, um, you know, that's going to mean you should have fairly decent um you know service there now i will say another thing uh with the mobile broadband the towers themselves they're limited in you know the, the more connect the more people in your area yeah. let's say using the same provider you're going to go for and you're all online at the same time it is going to slow that down a bit so yeah. uh while the, the reception might be fantastic there could be a lot of users in your area logging on at six o'clock at the same time you know the next thing to speak because the towers can only handle um you know it's like, it's like pressure water pressure coming down the tap if, if you turn on all the taps in the house at one time it slows down a wee bit from from the gush that you normally should expect yeah. down to a trickle so yeah. that's that's another factor in play as well probably important to keep that in mind as well when people choose um if you choose your broadband just basically on a a sort of set of uh statistics or a set of um you know just the information of how fast it's supposed to be a number that you see advertised is not always the number you're going yeah. to get is it that's that's a very good point yeah um up to um the all the providers are guilty of this um mm -hmm. you know they'll advertise up to 100 meg connection or up mm -hmm. to 150 or up to 80 whatever mm -hmm. they can do <clears throat> again the up to is you know, somebody in an area that says up to 100 meg will actually probably in theory never hit the 100 meg. They might get 90 and that could be at four o'clock on a Sunday morning when nobody else is online and, uh, there's a, you know, it's a grand clear calm night out and <laughs> everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the, the fox is howling at the moon from the south kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. The north, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but no, up, up to is 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 um definitely i definitely wouldn't be reading into, into those figures it's like it's too. technically possible but <laughs> but that's yeah. about it it's just yeah yeah so yeah. let's change track a little bit um here and just think about if let's say you have already made your choice or you're stuck in a contract mm. and you're finding that maybe um the internet speeds just aren't particularly fast. What what are some of the things that might cause an internet connection to slow down? You mentioned one of them there was like if there's a number of people all trying to get onto the internet at the same time. Is there anything else that can impact that? Oh, oh gosh, uh, Joe, there's a whole host of things now. I kind of alluded to one of them there earlier about the position of a mobile, uh, mobile broadband data uh, box. But let's say if you're on the fixed telephone, you know, telephone wire coming in, and and I'll mention this one because a sizable proportion of the country are on these kind of connections. Um, the, the there's one main telephone provider in this country, and their responsibility uh, for managing the phone line system is they bring the cable to your door and one phone point. Okay, mm. and after that, uh, the responsibility is yours. So they will say that we've brought the service to the first telephone point in your house. Uh, they'll test it and say that's working fine. Now, what can happen is because 
telephone broadband is shared with your voice calls. So you pick up the handset and you ring someone. It's it's all using that line. So yeah. the internet, uh, the internet and your voice calls, they have to be separated out. And there's a little thing that comes with your uh, broadband router uh, is called a filter. And that's responsible for keeping the voice and the data separated. Otherwise, um, they'll, they'll squeal over each other and you'll generally take, take a, a hit on speeds and even yeah. connections dropping from that. So filters are fierce important. But what happens is you usually get a, a router and there's only one or two filters with it. And you could have three phones around the house and you could have a skybox plugged into it and you could have an old fax machine that you probably yeah. don't use anymore plugged in in another room. And all these all these can interfere um, if they're not filtered, particularly uh, if they're not filtered or if a filter has gone. And I remember one case, um, you know, somebody phoned me up and said, every time the sister rings the mother, you know, they're living at home with their mother. Yeah. Every time the sister rings the mother, bloody internet drops and it comes back and it drops and it comes back and it drops. It turns out what was going on was uh, the filter the filter had gone really it was wasn't working as it's supposed to so we just yeah. changed out the filter and now the day is up uh mm -hmm. house you know how even things plugged in like a house alarm you know some of them on, they, they use the phone line to, to monitor your house alarm they have to be filtered as well so all, all these things that are drawn off um drawn off your phone line um they, they need to be filtered out so it's, it's a great thing to make sure that every device that's connected to your phone system in the house, particularly if you have lots of sockets, phone sockets around the house, um, that they are that they are filtered correctly. That's actually a really interesting one, I think, yeah. because yeah, I yeah. think people probably I, would use the filters that are in the box when they get the the mm -hmm. um, router and it's it kind of almost thinking, well, that must be enough because that's how many they sent me. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I've heard of people going along and they said, oh, I've tried this provider, that provider, the other provider, and they went through about four or five of them. And yeah. they say, oh, God, none of, none of them are any good. The, the internet keeps dropping on them. It usually points to something else that's going on there. Um, now, OK, you get the you get the router free usually off your internet provider. Now and again, you might get a dodgy one and it has to go back and you get a new box and then your problem is sorted. But um, mm -hmm sometimes it, it can be something else as well so it's it's to take into you know everything that can be aware maybe that these things can be wrong you know yeah yeah and and would there be any other issues that you'd be kind of you know that people need to be aware of really of uh, what what else can slow down internet in the yep. house or yep. baby monitors huge yeah huge <laughs> huge um Huge issue now. It, the 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 <laughs> baby monitors now um, a lot of them, a lot of them use a different frequency. But when when Wi-Fi really kicked off in in its beginning, people had TV senders. You know, let's say yeah. they had a second TV down the bedroom and uh, they transmitted a skybox down or a baby monitor and all these things. You turn on the the Wi-Fi and you get lines across the screen. Um, you know, so and now it's just operating close to mm. your your Wi-Fi or 2.4 or 5.0 um, can that can interfere with it too. So that's that's particularly though yeah. for the Wi-Fi people. You know, if you're going yeah. with a direct cable from the internet router into your device, that wouldn't be an issue. But as was nearly everything yeah. now has gone to wireless in a house. You know, if you're it smart, has yeah, yeah. you know you've yeah. your smart bulbs and all these smart sockets, all these yeah. things that they're all they're all relying now on the Wi-Fi. So uh, well. anything that can cross that frequency, you know, can, can give potential issues as well. Mm. And did you mention that, like in a say it's in an old house, big thick walls, things like that? Is that much oh, of an issue? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, particularly for the Wi-Fi again you got um, you got to remember that like it's it's anything that's wireless and um, now while it doesn't need exactly your line of sight but needs a fairly interrupted um you know a, a fairly interrupted run between the receiver and yeah. the transmitter the transmitter being your your router in in your in your house so if you've yeah. got walls of a house that was built in 1910s 1920s you know it could be three foot thick 
So yeah, yeah. Um, the signal is just not going to penetrate that solid rock. Um, what can you do in them situations? Uh, there is products um, available. Uh, they're called power line adapters. Um, mm. They're fairly inexpensive. Um, basically, you would run a cable from the router into one of these plugs, plug it into the electrical port in near the router. And where you want the internet to come back out in another room, um, you plug in, you get a pair of these plugs and you bring the other one to the other room. Again, you can run a cable back out or some of the more clever ones will have Wi-Fi on the second outlet and it will yeah. uh, relay, relay your, your Wi-Fi into that room. It's, they're quite a good solution for, um, you know, older build houses like that, as I say, with the three foot walls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if, if you have the one um, electrical system in that old build, then you're, ele then you're away, away in a hack with it. Um, yeah. I don't think there's too many houses out there with so, two different electric suppliers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with, with most of these things, there there's maybe something something we can do to kind of get the yeah a bit more out of the internet connections. We're not necessarily going to get like lightning fast speeds on every one, but we can usually improve it a little bit. So maybe just you, you've given us a few kind of ideas of the things that can be issues and maybe ways to solve them. If yeah. if somebody was in the situation now where they don't really know what the cause is, um, they just know they've got slow internet, they know that maybe they're going to have to call somebody in to sort it out, but there's just maybe one or two things that they might be able to try to pinpoint what it is first. Is there kind of a workflow you could recommend or something that you would say to people, here's a couple of simple things you can try first? Uh, can I go back to Colin's one and just turn off the router and turn it back on? Yeah. <laughs> 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 that that does work again. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, actually, in some in some cases, probably a good idea. Uh, people leave their broadband boxes on twenty four seven. Um, you know, s switch yeah. them off maybe at least once a week. I know some households are to be brilliant at switch them off every night going to bed. Um, yeah. But I know in some households they leave them on twenty four seven three six five. It's probably a good idea, maybe just to give them a small bit of a cool off, you know, at least once a week, just just to yeah. do that. Um, because they can they can freeze up and lock up and and just and usually they might restart themselves. You know, you'd find, oh, where's the Wi-Fi gone? It's gone there for the last two or three minutes. The next thing is back. Um, but in some cases, uh, it's no harm to switch them off. Uh, that's one thing. Yes, switching it off and back on again. Um, look location of the router from you know from where it's is, and sometimes you nearly have to catch the guys at the day when they're installing you nearly have to say well i want it here because i want the wi-fi to reach so many rooms yeah but if that's yeah. not the case sometimes it can be at the front door you're down at the back end of the house and the wi-fi you're only getting one or two bar string probably look at something there like getting a, a wi-fi extender or even going back to them power line extenders you know, one of those yeah. uh, two solutions will work there just to bring that bring that strength of Wi-Fi down because the further away you get from your Wi-Fi, the, the poorer the, the, the speed is going to be. And are those Wi-Fi extenders, are they good? Are they, gen is it kind of a case of you get what you buy for or in general? Yeah, I, I, I generally, I there are cheapy yeah. ones out there that, um you know, the 20 quid ones, are really not that great. Yeah. Um, it's work going for a kind of a, a branded one. Um, I know, remember we were speaking there before Christmas, I think it was, we we're on about the smart speakers. And uh, Google mm. have the the uh, the mesh, uh, which doubles up yeah. as Wi-Fi extender, but also is a smart speaker. So if you were considering saying, hey, uh, you know, getting a smart speaker, but my internet coverage around the house is quite poor. Um, you know, maybe look at these. It's it's kind of a two bar, two birds with a one stone solution, and yeah. and you know, and thing about getting these extenders and whatnot. Even if you change out your broadband provider, you know, your contract with company A is up in six seven weeks time, and you're definitely going to company B because of a fantastic offer on. Uh, you can retune these Wi-Fi yeah. extenders and mesh systems to work with. The next router you're going to get. 
So right. yeah. they're not. Yeah, they're not. Um, so those things can be a really good. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And so that, you know, don't don't think you're maybe that you're going to waste money. Saying, oh well, if I buy if I buy a Wi-Fi extender for this router, but I'm going to be thrown out in three months' time or whatever, yeah, and yeah. another provider. No, you can retune them and go again. Yeah, that's really useful as well. So just kind of that, that's given us a really good sense of different things that you might be able to do to get a bit more from from your internet connection. Just before we finish up on this, but is there any kind of final uh, recommendations or, or even just kind of takeaway points from this that, that really we want to emphasize? Um, I suppose like there, there, it's such it's such a broad thing. Um, mm. You know, the, the pros and cons of each connection type, it's um, how it performs. And as, as I said at the height of the show, it's, it's um, location, location, location. So uh, what will work for you and what won't work for you or what could go wrong for you or what won't go wrong for you, you know, and your next door neighbor could experience the total opposite. Um, it's yeah. such, um, you know, uh, it's so circumstantial down to where you live, the type of building you're in, what it is you're doing, how much of the internet you want to use, um, you know, get back to the area, even if there's other, if all your neighbors are on the one service, all that comes yeah. into play. And I suppose, how do you investigate that? Um, that mm. is probably a, a challenge in itself, you know, who do you speak to? Yeah. You know, if I ask my neighbor, who do they use and they find it great, am I going to chance getting it in the next thing I find it rubbish? You know, you're looking over the neighbor and yeah. over the neighbor's one saying, you recommended that thing to me and now I'm stuck in a two year contract. <laughs> uh, I suppose, you know, and and maybe look, maybe look for some of the providers out there that would say, hey, look, take it home, try it out for 14 days. If you don't like it, bring it back. Some of them do yeah. that. Uh, that is definitely worth um, looking into. And um, so, yeah, there, there, there are a couple of takeaway points. It's so, you know, it, I could dream up of 25, 30 different scenarios for all different people, and I still find other people out there say, well, no, actually, my circumstances yeah, yeah. are different. Yes, it is. Um, well, I, I suppose I've touched on a couple of points, maybe, and I might have pricked a few things of interest in people's ears. Say, yeah. Oh, gosh, actually, you know, I've that, I've that um, home alarm system. I wonder, is that filtered? And next yeah. thing, you know, somebody might go out and, and discover it's not and put a filter or get a filter installed on that. The next thing their internet speed jumps up by ten percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that yeah. can that can happen. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know. Well, I think that I think those tips are really useful, Daniel. And um, they're things maybe that don't occur to people, but uh, definitely at this point in time as well, when people depend on the internet so much, it's definitely yeah. good to have those kind of tips to be able to get the, the most out of the connection. So thanks very much for coming on to the show for uh, to talk about that today absolutely. Daniel much appreciated yeah, absolutely. and like um like the labs team that we have here um you know between us all if somebody was ringing in you know maybe just for a little bit of advice or some tips and things to check out for themselves you know if they wanted to describe to them so you know describe their situation you know yeah. they could say mm, okay but maybe you could look at this or look at that and you know kind of troubleshoot from the top and see you can make yeah. help out so I, I and get a better like most of the times it'll go back to the internet service provider but another time it can be something in your house um yeah. that's actually messing about with your internet yeah very good and uh that's that's a really good reminder as well if there's anybody who has any issues with any of the things we've been talking about here um whether it's internet connections or anything else and you want some support just get in touch with labs at ncbi.ie so appreciate that daniel you're more than welcome thanks very much jude for having me on Good stuff, and uh, I'm sure that um, people might you might want to even listen back to that on their YouTube channel, for for example, or if you get your uh, major your your uh, podcast from any of the other major platforms, then uh, you can listen back to to this once it's uploaded there as well, and uh, you might be able to follow through on some of those tips too. So that was a, a very practical section there, just getting the most out of the uh, internet connections that we have.